It's time to unleash a monster. <laughs> Ia! Ia Saka! Nosferatu's Elemenon! Kata! Kingu Afsu Katulu Estra! Gushangu Ana Nerinovas! Barata! <laughs> it's working! It's working! Eat my kitty, Derek! Do your doozy kitty! Metal Monster! Oh! Killbot! I was just, uh. doing metal stuff. You got that right. So what do we know about Monster Dog? Well, I know it's an Italian B-movie directed by the same guy who directed Troll 2. If that's any indication of where this shit sandwich is going. But I guess there is a silver lining. It does star Alice Cooper. Whoa, whoa! The Alice Cooper? The Alice Cooper. We're, We're not worthy! We're, We're not, not worthy. worthy! We're scum! We, we suck. suck! He just got out of rehab for alcoholism, and he took a break from music for a while. During this break, he tried to take up acting. Monster Dog would be what came from this experience. Personally, I'm just really surprised he didn't start drinking again. So, why do you need me to watch this? Because it's much more fun when you have somebody to watch it with. Alright, well then press on, you douche canoe. Prick on a stick! Is it just me, or does this credit sequence go on for fucking ever? It is pretty atmospheric, though. So Alice Cooper plays a rock star. Gee, I wonder how he's going to pull that one off. And he goes by his super badass name of... Vince Raven? <laughs> I'm sorry, did I read that right? They couldn't come up with a better fucking name than Vince... Raven? As soon as the movie begins, Alice is doing a music video. Not only is it a cool and cheesy way to introduce the movie, but the song is actually quite good. In fact, the original songs in this movie are well done and are debatably the highlights of this flick. See Me in the Mirror looks really nice with its dark colors and its creepy setting. But what's the point of their place in this movie? I mean, don't get me wrong, I love Coop. But these music videos are an obvious attempt to cash in on his presence. They are, but then again, nobody would be watching this if he wasn't in it. He carries the movie. He's the life force that drives this beast through the viewer's declining mental states. There are some quirky moments in this video here. These shots of him in the car make it look like a Dodge commercial. Dodge, brought to you by Alice Cooper. Talk to the hand. Anyway, Vince, his girlfriend Sandra, and his film crew go to shoot a music video at the house he grew up in. Something you'll notice very quickly is that Alice's voice was overdubbed. It was common in the 1970s and 1980s for low-budget Italian movies to use cheap film that couldn't record sound and then overdub the voices later. Once we get there, we can take it, experiment, play around, until we come up with something original. No, 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 stick around. Hang out with us. Any way you look at it, his voice is better dubbed than everybody else's. Vince, how are you going to find the way to the house? With my nose. Hey, guys, where is Angela? She must still be in the living room. Come on, we mustn't leave her alone. Well, that may be, but Alice Cooper's vocal dub still sounds like Gregory Peck after a shot of helium. Oh, well, cute, Lee. How much do I owe you? It's taken care of. It's taken care of? Who? Ooh, I spy Discount Danny Trio. Before Vince and company can get to the house, the Discount Danny Trejo, known as Joss the Housekeeper, is interrupted from making a ridiculous amount of sandwiches. That's right, sandwiches! The rock star's ultimate food of choice. He hears a strange noise, so he walks outside. What does he find? Quite possibly the least intimidating pack of dogs ever, especially for a film called fucking Monster Dog. I mean, honestly, Charlie from All Dogs Go to Heaven has a better chance of raising the hair on the back of your necks than these cute little fluffy woofykins. But don't take my word for it. Just look at his fucking face. Oh no, these dogs are so scary. What do I do? Ah. 
lousy weather. Wait a minute. Who the fuck are these guys? Goddamn fog. Where the fuck are these guys? What the fuck are these guys looking at? This movie just pulled a Manos and switched to the cops randomly. Anyways, back to Alice Cooper. They come to a roadblock where the cops explain that there have been recent murders and attacks by wolves. The scruffy looking cop is real eccentric and says a lot of crazy stuff like this. Show yourselves, you damn dope. Must be die, I come along, little doggy. It's been a long time since I last saw you, boy. Since your father had. Oh, yes, I uh, remember. Well, if it's okay with you guys, uh, we'd like to go now. <laughs> I really cannot take his voice seriously. But you know about the dogs, don't you? Yeah, we'll watch out. There already have been five deaths in the area. Five? At the other roadblocks, they only mentioned two deaths. Now there's three more to chalk up to the damn dogs. It's difficult to tell which bit came from where. Why, what was left, you could put in a plastic bag. This big. <sighs> okay, kids. You can go now. Jesus Christ! Was that amount of detail necessary for a random roadblock checkpoint? Do they tell that shit to every passerby, or do they have different variations of it? Yep, they say last group about y'all size come through here, got every one of their intestines dragged up through their mouths, and these here dogs play tetherball with their entrails. Anywho, y'all free to go. Have a nice night. After they leave, the sheriff and the deputy go to look for the dogs. Hey, Sheriff. Sheriff, where are you? So the detail-friendly sheriff's been effectively mutilated. Come on, movie, you could have at least hired a smaller actor to make it at least somewhat believable he got liquefied in seconds. I guess if a demon wolf got hungry enough, it could chomp him up pretty quick. But wow, that was quiet. Usually eating somebody tends to get really loud, especially when she's being eaten out. <laughs> Back on the road, they hit a dog and get out to look at it. Fix, look out! <laughs> Jordan, switch on the emergency lights before someone rams the camper. Uh-huh. Uh, Frank, let's move the dog over to the side of the road. Okay. We'll keep petting the dog over there. Yeah, and we'll keep drinking milk! Milk is what rock stars drink! Innocent, pure milk! Vince then puts the dog out of its misery with the already bloody rock... <laughs> Your typical Friday the 13th crazy old man comes out of the woods to tell them they're all gonna die. And does that discount Danny Trio? Cause it doesn't look like it. And if it's not, then who the fuck is it? You will all die. Wait, let's get you to a hospital. He storms back into the woods, but Alice Cooper, oh I mean, Vince Raven, <laughs> decides he has to go and help this man. Presumably the same way he helped that dog they ran over. Hey, wait a minute, Vince. While looking, they come across a monster dog's head. No, not the whole monster dog, just its head, and run away to continue their journey to the house. Vince, how are you going to find the way to the house? With my nose. <laughs> when I was a kid, I could find my way home just by the smell. What smell? The bullshit. It's unmistakable. Maybe that's how he found the script to this movie. <laughs> Good one. Anyways, they get to what appears to be the most obviously haunted house in existence, and it turns out nobody's there. Hey, Josh! They did a good job decorating the house. There are spider webs everywhere. It almost looks like the house from Resident Evil. Even the guns have webs all over them. Spider-Man must have used that house as his hunting lodge. So Vince goes looking for Joss. But Angela, who barely knew where they were earlier, goes full Stephen King-style psychic and suddenly understands the gravity of the situation they're in. But her friends are just happy eating. I'm not hungry. You don't know what you're missing. Yeah! Ham and cheese with a crust cut off! There are some things. I feel. I sense them. Horrible things are going to happen here. Okay. When they go to bed, Angela has a quite drawn out dream sequence where the old man teases her. Is it even a dream sequence? Or is this really happening? The scene is so long and out of nowhere, it's really hard to figure out the first time watching it. <laughs> so you think I'm lying, do you? <laughs> You'll soon find out who your singer is. A golfer? A history buff? And then this trippy yeah. murder sequence turns into a bad Full House 90210 hey, hybrid almost immediately when she wakes up. It's me, Angela. <laughs> no, no! I don't want to die! You 
changed into a... Uh, and you killed everybody. Everybody except me. I call that discrimination. Right. <laughs> yeah. Man, you can't play favorites with friends. Either you wipe out everybody or no one. <laughs> <laughs> You changed into a... a werewolf. Oh. <laughs> Can you see Vince transformed into a werewolf? <laughs> <laughs> Alice is looking like, hey, I can be a werewolf. After that, it's revealed that Vince's father was affected with a deadly heart condition that turned him into a werewolf. Listen, werewolves do exist. Oh, bullshit, Vince. The year 2000 is just around the corner. Wow, that dates this movie. And you're scared of werewolves. Twenty years ago, something terrible happened here. And it's happening again. Entire families were wiped out by a pack of killer dogs. Vince also says that his father was blamed for the death of the townspeople when he turned into a wolf, so a group of men took it upon themselves to burn him alive. The next day, they start shooting their radical music video. Seriously though, are all these montages supposed to be making me feel for these characters? Cause honestly at this point I'm just rooting for the monster dog to slaughter all of them. What the hell kind of music video are they shooting on the balcony? Probably a song called, Look at my coat, isn't it pretty? They're wearing raincoats and holding umbrellas when it ain't raining, man. <laughs> the second music video, See Me in the Mirror, is pretty cool with the costumes and the scenery. Even the shadow of Joss in the window is creepy. After Discount Danny Trio's body falls through the window, Angela has another psychic fit and runs away. Who else besides Vince goes to look for her? I swear, it seems like he's the only character who does anything productive in this movie. Are we all agreed then? Uh, well, only if you swear not to take any risks. Oh, you mean like taking a loaded gun out of your enclosed safe house and going out into the wild blue yonder to search for what is either a, a deranged murderer who sadistically places his victim's body in the main window of their own house. Or, B, a fucking werewolf. Risk like that? Sure. Angela! Angela! Come back! I'm finished doing New Wave and I'm going back to metal! The most obvious villain ever and his lynch mob arrive to see if Vince is around so they can help him. Of course, they're showing their weapons and saying things like, We knew his daddy real well. I can't wait to see him again. If you invite me in, maybe we can wait for him together. Real friendly-like over a couple of beers. But what does our Scooby gang do? Okay. Come on in. Invite them all in, of course. I swear, how many horror movies would work if the main cast wasn't all fucking retarded? Everyone's taken hostage and held at gunpoint while the baddies discuss what they're going to do to Vince when he returns. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna shoot this here silver bullet right through his heart. You are the same band that killed Vince's father. If you try to kill him, we'll turn you in. We'll go to the sheriff. The sheriff's dead. And so is the deputy. I did not shoot the deputy. Vince finally finds Angela. Angela. Vince. Come on. Let's get back to the house. I have this vision. Forget the vision. Let's get out of here. Yeah, never mind that unresolved plot point. We've got an entirely different unresolved plot point to get back to. While Vince is on his way back, the horror movie turned into a western. Ed, you be ready to open the door when I tell you. Right. Frank, Sandra, open the door. Come on, quick. Now! Yeah! Right in 
the heart? Exactly. Even if Vince were to walk through that door, the guy would have shot him in the stomach. Gives a new meaning to spill your guts. Then they realize what terrible shots they are, as well as failures at life, and chase the actual target to the roof. I don't like you. After shit hits the fan, one of the attackers finally says what we've all been thinking. You look like a couple of queers to me. That's what I've been saying this whole time. Finally, someone in this movie talking some sense. Yeah, it's the Alice Coopernator. Hasta la vista, alcoholism. Meanwhile, the dogs come in and start chasing everyone. The guy with the glasses throws a lantern at the werewolf in front of him, and it sets his back on fire. That was a magical teleporting lantern. But then... <laughs> the Muppet Monster Dog! Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> Vince. Oh. Vince shows up and calms the dogs down. He says, Come on, Mary Lou. Let's go. Which actually translates to, let's sit on the bed and talk for a few minutes instead of leaving. Of course, in order for them to actually leave, Vince has to do his Ivan Drago impression to calm down the dogs. Here's a shot of all the dogs together. Yeah, the pound kicked us out. We couldn't pay the rent. Vince! They suddenly all calmed down. But how? I have treats. Go wake up Mary Lou. They're getting ready to leave, but they forgot the keys, so they have to go back. The keys are I guess no one thought of that. Oh, we're rock stars. We don't use keys. Once they get their shit together, they drive away to find Mary Lou dispatched by the obvious jump scare, which is in the car. Ah! <laughs> jump scare didn't get me. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you, Killbot. Fuck you too, buddy. Fuck you too. Wouldn't that be pretty impressive if you could teach a dog to open a car door? I tell you now, he's taking my place. Wow, it was the old man. It turns out that he was attacked by Vince's father and got the werewolf curse. So he's been waiting all this time to pass it on to Vince. So why didn't he just do it when he first saw him? That way you'd have the whole rest of the movie to have Alice Cooper eating people and ripping people in half. Use it. Shoot me. Damn, that's a creepy transformation. In her position, there's no way I would have waited, but everybody wants to see Alice Cooper as a werewolf. Yeah, there he is! What? That's it? Only 30 seconds, you don't even get to see it! No way, that would have made this dumpster fire almost worth sitting through. So what's the only way they could wrap this up? Perhaps with Vince coming back to life and going on a killing spree? Nope. They took the song from the beginning and made it a montage using scenes from the movie. Well, we gotta get our money's worth out of Alice Cooper somehow. Oh wait, this is an Italian film. Mamma mia, we've got to get our money's worth out of Alice Cooper's spaghetti. Appa dooly fettuccine, appa We're gonna piss some people off, aren't we? Hey, you're the one who said it. Well, no going back now. So what's the final verdict? It's lacking in the plot, gore, and scare departments. Also, the monster dog was basically a dummy head and you couldn't see the rest of the monster dog, and the characters were your typical horror movie kill-offs. However, the movie makes up for this with great scenery and atmosphere. There's so much fog, spider webs, and dark colors. It's a predictable movie, but that's probably why you'd watch it. Watch it knowing that it's bad and expect a lot of cheese. It can be slow in some parts, but turn off your brain and let the dog bite. It's a treat for Alice fans, but it's even better when you watch it with a friend. You know, I couldn't agree more. We both knew going into this that there was going to be more corny bits in this movie than the full-scale Nebraskan Summer Harvest, but I still couldn't help be a little bit underwhelmed by this one, even for my standards. For example, when I reviewed Trick or Treat and Deathgasm, I went into it with the same mindset I did this one and came out the other end with a film I legitimately enjoyed despite its many flaws. The dub of Alice Cooper shouldn't bother me as much as it did, but come on, you see Alice Cooper's name on the poster, you want the whole Coop experience. Not some Italian Gregory Peck wannabe. I guess in the end I'd say what I say for most movies I review. You need to see it for yourself to decide, but as far as I'm concerned, this will actually be the first film I've reviewed where I'm not singing its praises at the end. 
Anything you want to add, Killbot? Yeah. Your sideburns make you look like a billy goat. And I see you have Lords of Chaos laying around in your room. Whatever you do, don't read it. Set it on fire before it's too late. Reading the Kama Sutra will benefit you much better. I'm basing that off of a highly uneducated guess, but I gotta give credit where credit's due. Your participation in this whole experience has been surprisingly pleasant. In my flawless opinion, we make a pretty good team. Hey dude, it's your turn. Reciprocate. Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry, I thought we were done. Wait, what just happened to your rule number two shirt? What? <laughs> Killbot, you know, you really should lay off that smoke. It isn't good for you. Come on, dude, we just asked La Vista to alcoholism like five minutes ago. Well, after that shit heap of a film, I'd say it's time for a little reunion. Ciao, Bella, alcohol. He's a bit too intoxicated to end this, so I'm Killbot and Gorgor attack. And I'm the metal monster. Say fucking metal. <laughs> He's the drunk metal monster. Grind on!